and he was no longer called Lucifer, but now Satan, the devil, the dragon. And he's changed, and yet when he hears praise, I believe somehow it triggers something within him. It disorientates, it confuses. He hates to hear praise. Praise the Lord. reminds him of what he used to do, where he once was, at the throne, in heaven, an archangel. Now he's Satan. And perhaps praise does to him what, what fingernails on a chalkboard does to me. I hate that sound. Fingernails on a chalkboard or the sound of a dentist drill in my mouth or whatever. Certain sounds cause irritation. Frank Sinatra's records just irritate me. Certain things just... Ugh. And when you hear certain sounds, you want to ah, close your ears and run away. And I suggest to you that's what Satan does in any day that he hears you, me, us. Praise the Lord. Give thanks. Honor him. Listen, kids. Listen, folks. Listen, gang. There is power in praise. It satisfies the soul. Eat it up that there might be a smile on your face and that you might have a belly full. Eat it up. That the enemy might be beaten back. Those forces which war against you, which seek to depress you, which are there to discourage you, the enemy, you see, is beaten back. When people like Jehoshaphat say, praise the Lord, his mercy endures forever. And I'm going to march to that tune as the day unfolds, praising him, giving thanks. Secondly, quickly, we're almost done. It prevents procrastination. What do you mean? There can be a tendency to say, well, Lord, here we are. I'm offering you this sacrifice of thanksgiving. Listen. I'm a little bit late. Uh, we'll, we'll finish this communion. We'll finish this dinner that we're enjoying tomorrow. I'll put it in a Ziploc bag. We'll have leftovers. But right now, there's demands. My, my family's calling me. I, I, I got to take care of my, my uh, lawn or whatever it might be. I just, there's, I, so Lord, we'll get to this tomorrow. No, no. The Lord says no. I want you to take the time to consume as much as you can in this moment, at this time, right here, right now. Don't put it off to tomorrow because tomorrow, as you know, never comes. It's always tomorrow. Man, there's family, there's football, there's phone calls, there's kids, there's things to do, there's places to go, there's people to hang with. And although we mean to, when all is said and done, so often we fail to do what we ought to. Ah, oh, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The intention is there, but the reality is something different than that. God understands, and that's why God says, here's the deal. I know that if you go to this Thanksgiving meal, and if I give you the option for leftovers, that is finishing up tomorrow or the next day, it's not going to happen. So I want you to stop and eat everything right here, right now. And here's what I want you to see on this Sunday. It's time to eat the leftovers right here, right now, to consume it all. What are you saying, Pastor John? Just this. It's so easy to hear a message, a teaching, and say, that's probably true. Praise would be good for me. I have been kind of grumpy, ungrateful, gussy gloomy, depressed, discouraged, despairing. Hmm. That might have some, some meaning for me to start praising him. I'm going to get to that. Uh, let's see now, but the rams are on and then my kids are coming over and then there's the bills to pay. And, and I know that you're like me, perhaps you mean to do these things, but, but you fail to get around to it. So what should we do, John? We're going to do it right now. We're going to take a few minutes and we're going to get on our knees if you're so inclined or bow your head if that's what you wish to do. And here's what I'm going to ask. I can't make you do this. You can be a rebel 
and continue to be depressed and defeated and discouraged and grumpy if you want to. I can't make you do this, but I'm going to ask of you in just a moment to spend three or four minutes, that's all, on your knees perhaps or with head bowed or whatever you choose to do, specifically giving thanks to the Lord for the blessings specifically, for the battles that you're facing presently, for the problems that you're feeling and struggling with right now, for the good things in everything, give thanks. Right now, how? I'm going to ask you to pray and put sentences, not just in your head, because if you're like me, your mind will wander. It just does. At least mine does. I wander. I can't ever. And before I know it, I just haven't said anything. I'm going to ask you to whisper your prayers, not that the people around you can hear, but that you're forming the sentences, that you're being articulate, that it is intelligent, that it's from your heart, where you say, Lord, thank you for fill in the blank. And I praise you because fill in the blank. And I'm choosing to believe in you right now in light of the battle that I'm now involved in. I'm not going to get grumpy, Lord, but I'm going to praise you and set myself and stand still and see the salvation that you'll send my way. And he will send salvation your way. Why don't you join in right now? Wherever you are at, stop and give thanks and praise to the Lord. Speak out loud and be specific and give thanks for all the blessings that God has given to you. And as you give thanks, the peace of God will be upon you. The victory will be yours. This